Hello Rail fans, and welcome to another French Fried Trains Minecraft Locomotive tutorial. Today by request, we're going to be building this Florida Tri-Rail Locomotive. And we will be building its corresponding train out behind it. So make sure if you're building this, to leave room on the track behind it. And this is an F40PH2C with the rainbow paint scheme. So let's get right into it here. The first step is to take a smooth port stair and get it on bottom in the middle of the rails. On either side of that, red nether brick stairs. And then on the outsides, upside down, outward facing red nether brick stairs. On the next layer, a polished black stone block in the middle. Then an upside down, smooth port stair on either side of that. And on the outsides, an upside down, red nether brick stair. Then five polished black stone blocks across the top. Then we're going to take a dark oak stair and get it stacked up in the middle to that second block for the coupler. Delete the ones we use for placement. Underneath it, a dark oak fence gate. We'll also open dark oak fence gates on either side of the coupler. Now we'll make a banner, so take out a loom and come into it. We're going to use a red banner and yellow die. We're going to put a yellow horizontal on bottom and a yellow horizontal on top. Then we're going to take out an item frame and put it on each top corner and put those banners on them and rotate them sideways. Then we're going to want to put this banner here into our inventory because we're going to need it later on in the build. Then there's a little step ladder up here, so behind this on the side, we're going to take acacia stairs and on the side starting from the top we're gonna put two of them upside down in a column underneath that an acacia slab and we'll do the same thing on the other side so an acacia slab and two upside down stairs now on the next block behind this we need to get netherite on each rail for the wheels with an end rod axle then we'll come in this and we'll put dark oak fence gates open into the ends of these wheels while this end's still open. Then we'll take out deep slate tile stairs and we're going to make a back-to-back t-shape -back pattern that's five wide coming across the rails. So five that way over there and five this way over here. Then another set of netherite wheels here with an end rod axle. An open dark oak fence gate into the ends of the wheels. Then we're going to take polished black stone block on this top middle three here and we're going to fill it in down the length of this truck. We're going to come out one row past where those fence gates are here. Then we're going to take string on this second block out and put it between the rails and to the right. And we're going to have to make three rows of anvils here for air tanks. And of course to put them on the rails we'll have to crouch. There's three air tanks under here. On the other side of the rails from these air tanks, we're gonna put two rows of three chisel deep slate blocks and another two by three above it. Across the top of it, three dark oak buttons. Then we'll fill in these two rows with polished black stone above the air tanks. And we'll put three dark oak fences above it for pipes on that side. Then we'll fill in three polished black stone across the bottom here. And then outward facing polished black stone stairs in a row that's 10 blocks long. Then three blocks across the end of this. And same thing on this side, upside down, outward facing polished black stone stairs, 10 blocks long until it meets up on the bottom here. Then we'll come on top of this with our polished black stone block continue filling this top middle three in down the length of the fuel tank here. And we can also fill in the outside edges of the fuel tank. So this will end up being five wide. For now, we'll stop at the very end of the fuel tank. Come towards the front of the fuel tank here, one block from the front, a player head, then a crimson button, skip a block, and another one. Same thing here, so a player head, 
crimson button, skip a black, crimson button. Now come down behind this and we'll do the next trap. So skip a black behind it and get a netherite on each rail with an end rod axle. Then we're going to take out deep slate tile stairs, upside down, and a back-to-back T-shaped pattern that's coming five wide across the rails. Then another set of netherite wheels with an end rod axle. Open dark oak fence gates into the ends of the wheels here and into the ends of the wheels on the other side. Then we'll fill in the top middle three with a polished black stone block coming down the length of this truck. We'll stop above where these fence gates are. In front of it here, we're gonna make a five by three of polished black stone blocks coming out to each side of the rails. In front of that, a T-shaped pattern and an end rod down above each rail. Then on the bottom, in front of this, a smooth quart stair in the middle, red nether brick stair coming out two to either side. A polished black stone block in the middle up there, then a smooth quartz upside down stair on either side, and an upside down red nether brick on either side of that. Then five polished black stone across the top. Then we're gonna put acacia slabs coming up these three blocks on the bottom hip boxes of each side for the stairs. Now we'll come in our inventory and take back out that banner from earlier. We're also going to need an item frame. Put an item frame on each top corner and put that banner in it and rotate it sideways just like on the front. Now we're going to take a dark oak stair for the coupler and get it stacked up to this second middle block. Delete this one. Under it, put a dark oak fence gate. And on either side, we're going to put a dark oak fence. Then we'll swing around on top here and we'll fill in this third layer on the top middle three with polished black stone going end to end. Now we're going to come down on the sides of the trucks here and everywhere there's a wheel, we're going to put a hopper on the side of it. Same thing back here. And then we do the other side. Same thing here. And same thing here. Then we're going to put a full row of deep slate tile slabs going from wheel to wheel across the top of the side of the truck here. Same thing here. Same thing on this end down here. On the side in front of these fences, we're going to put a brewing stand and a brewing stand back behind the fuel tank here. We'll also put one behind the fuel tank on this side. Then we're going to take out smooth quartz slab and on the very top side, we're going to go end to end on both sides of the locomotive. Now we're going to come on the front of the locomotive here and we're going to put a row of five smooth cores, then one on each side, then a cyan concrete on each inside and an orange concrete in the middle, then a column of two smooth cores behind it on each side. Then in the middle of the front we'll put a glowstone and a smooth cores on either side of it. Behind it a full row of five smooth cores coming across. Then in each of these front corners a smooth cores slab. Then we'll put an item frame on the front of this glowstone with another glowstone in it and then one on each bottom corner with glowstone for the flashing ditch lights. On the very top of this nose piece, we'll fill in the back with five black carpet and the front with three black carpet. Behind this we'll put two cyan concrete on each side. Then above that on the front, a column of two smooth quartz on either side. Then we're going to take out black stained glass blocks for our windows, two across here, a smooth quartz, two more. Then extend the cyan concrete back another two blocks, 
and then two above that on the back. So two here, two over there, and a smooth quartz in front of it. Then an orange concrete on the very back top on each side. Then two smooth quartz filling in the sides. Above that, three black stained glass on top of either side. Then behind this, we're going to put two upside down warp stairs on either side to be the ladder to get up on the locomotive. We're going to come underneath the stairs, knock out this slab that's underneath it, put an upside down polished black stone brick stair and a polished black stone brick slab under that. Do the same thing over here. So we'll knock out this slab here, an upside down polished black stone brick stair and a slab under that. Then we're going to put a birch door above these stairs on either side. And actually we're going to edit the front side of this cab a little because I'm not liking how the angle is going. So we're going to delete this bottom front cyan and replace it with smooth quartz. Same thing for this one up here and this orange one. Replace it all with smooth quartz. Then we'll knock out these two and put in black wool for the locomotive number. So it should look like that now. We'll do the same thing on this side. So we'll knock out this one, put in smooth quartz. Knock out this one, put in smooth quartz, and this orange one. Then knock out these two and put in black wool for the locomotive number. Now we're going to come on the top side with outward facing smooth quartz stairs. Bring it back above the door and two more past it. Then three cobbled deep slate stairs. Then three smooth quartz stairs. Then five cobbled deep slate. Then a smooth quartz. Then six cobbled deep slate. Then another smooth quartz. Then we'll swing around over here. Three smooth quartz blocks across this. And we're just going to copy our stair pattern from the other side directly over to this side, except facing the opposite way. And this will frame in all of our vent sections up here. So cobble deep slate here, smooth quartz, three cobble deep slate, and then smooth quartz all the way to the very front above the windows. We'll put three smooth quartz blocks across the front middle above the windows there and then we'll swing around to the very back end here and we're going to take out cyan concrete starting under where the back of this roof is on the outside edge and we're going to make a column that's two blocks high and we're going to extend it forward by eight blocks in total. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side, starting from the back, a column of two cyan concrete, eight blocks long. And actually we're going to bring it forward another two blocks. So a two by two here and a two by two over there. Then across this bottom open space, we're going to put a single row of cyan concrete covering the whole gap. Same thing over there. Then we're going to come up in front of these stairs and we're going to replace this one with smooth quartz. Same thing over there. Then we'll come to the very back and we're going to take out lime concrete, a full row across the top of this. And then we're going to come forward down here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side here. So a full row up here. And then come forward by six right here. 
Then we're going to take orange concrete right up to the door, then above this lime concrete, and then above this lime concrete back here. So it steps down like this. We'll do the same thing over here. So orange concrete up here. Then step down and above this lime concrete. And step down and above this cyan concrete. Then we'll fill in all the rest of this with smooth quartz blocks. And we'll do the same thing over here. So we'll fill in all the rest of this empty space with smooth quartz blocks. Then here I came around the back to fill it in and I realized my error. The back is too long. We won't have room for the railings in the porch. So we're gonna have to take off this entire end row here. Sorry about this. We're going to have to do some editing. So delete this entire end column and across here. Then across this back three, we're going to put two cyan concrete on either side. Lime concrete across it, then orange, then smooth quartz. Then we're going to have to change these back two stairs to smooth quartz. Then we'll head up to the front here and we're going to fill in the middle three of this roof with smooth quartz blocks and we're going to bring that all the way down to the other end. Now we'll move these vents a little since we moved everything forward. So come up here. We're going to knock out this one and replace it with smooth quartz. Same thing on this side. And then we'll come in front of this vent, knock out this, and put in cobbled deep slate on either side like that. So they're more spaced out correctly like this. Now come up on top of the front, open a dark oak fence gate in the middle for the horn, and put a conduit on either side of that because there's these little strobe lights. Then we're going to make what I believe is an air conditioning unit up here. So starting from the engineer side, we're going to come in two blocks with a smooth quartz slab. Then we're going to extend it back two and another two coming out to the side. Right here we put deep slate tile slabs. Now come down to the back with a smooth quartz slab to do our fans and we're going to start in the middle one block in from the end. We're going to make this plus shape then a second and a third. Then we'll knock out the middles, put in cobbled deep slate, and we'll put an oak trap door in there to be the fans. Then we'll come up in the center of this vent section, another plus shape, knock out the middle, cobbled deep slate, and a trap door. Then align with this vent section a 3x3 three three of iron trap doors. Then we're going to come behind it here, and we're going to knock out the second middle block back from that. And we're going to take out a smoker and put a smoker there for the exhaust. Then we're going to surround that with this backward C shape of smooth quartz slabs. So now our roof line's completed. Now we're going to come up on front of the cab here with a dark oak sign for our locomotive number plate. And we're going to come on the very front, above the window, on the left hand side. Put a sign up there, and the locomotive number for this one is 808. And the same thing on the other side, above that window. Then we'll hit those with white dye, and then a glowing sack. Then we'll swing down, and we're going to work on the back here. So on the back, in this orange stripe, a side on each side with 808. Hit those with white dye and then a glow ink sack. Then a glow item frame in the middle with glow stone for the rear headlight. Then on the outside, a crimson by. Next, take out iron bars, start in this corner on the back. 
come up by four, then over another two. Skip the middle two here, and bring that all the way down to the bottom there. Then on the other side, we come up four here, and forward one. Same thing here. We're gonna come up four here, and forward by one. Then we'll put a door in this gap here. And we'll come up by the side door here. We're gonna put iron bars on each side and a column coming down, and we're gonna extend it down past this slab. And then we have to do the same thing for the door over here. So same thing, a column of iron bars on either side of the door, and a column coming down, and extend it down one past this slab. On top of this cap here, we're gonna put a lever pointing backwards and a C-pickle behind it for antennas. Now we need to make some banners, so we're gonna come back into our loom here. We're gonna be using a cyan banner in blue dye. A vertical in the middle, and then a horizontal on top. New banner. Top half blue, vertical on the left, and a diagonal. New banner. Horizontal on bottom, horizontal on top, vertical in the middle. New banner. Vertical on each side, horizontal on top, horizontal in the middle. New banner. Vertical on the left, horizontal on bottom. Then switch to cyan dye and put a cyan border around all of these letter banners. Then a new cyan banner with orange dye, with an orange diamond in the middle. Switch to cyan dye and put a horizontal across the bottom. There's like a little symbol that we need to replicate. Then we're going to come out on the back of the locomotive here, right in front of where these rails are, and we're going to put try, then our little banner with the symbol, and then rail. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So come around here, and starting one block in front of where the iron bars are. And I'm building it backwards so placement's correct. So rail, the little symbol, and then try. And now all our letters are placed. Now we'll work on the interior here. So come on in through this door, and take out a polished andesite slab and start filling it across at the level of the door here. Bring it forward another two, and we'll fill in two slabs high under the windows here. Then another two slabs in the middle for a control stand with some levers on it. Up here, a glow item frame with a compass for a gauge. Then we'll turn around with some stairs, and we'll put a stair on each side to be the seats here. Then we'll come back here, and we'll extend it out another row of slabs. Then in this middle on bottom, we're going to put a block of netherite and a glowstone to light the cap. Come back here, and we need to put a door on each side like this. Then take out polish andesite stairs on each side and make a staircase coming down. Then in this middle, we're going to use our polish andesite slabs to make a little divider here, four blocks long, going from floor to ceiling. Once we've done that, we're gonna do the prime mover. So right behind this in the middle, we're gonna put a row of eight sideways anvils. Then above the anvils, we're going to do a full row of netherite. Above the netherite, another full row of sideways anvils. On top here, from the front, we're going to put five wax blocks of copper and then three polished deep slate walls. Then on this row that's netherite, we're going to put stone buttons 
all the way down on each piece of netherite. Same thing over on this side. So a row of stone buttons coming down the side of the netherite. Then coming horizontally off the back of this, we're going to put two sideways end rods. Then we'll do the generator, so a 2x2 two two of wax copper. Up here, a single anvil. Then a polished andesite stair. Above the stair, a brewing stand. And above the anvil, a polished deep slate wall. Then we'll do the head end power unit. So skip a block in the middle, two sideways anvils two smooth stone blocks above that. Then we're going to put a lever on the front, on the side a glow item frame with a compass, two more smooth stone blocks, and two more anvils going this way on top of that. Now our engine compartment is completed here and we can walk through the whole locomotive. And there we have it folks. We've completed our Florida Tri-Rail F40PH2C in the rainbow paint scheme. I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, make sure you leave room behind it on the tracks because we're going to be building at least three different bi-level cars for this commuter train over the course of the next week or so. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And everyone have a great week. Stay safe out there, rail fans.